You know, it might not look like much, but it held up. So one of the issues that you have when you work on a standing sculpture like this, it's a delicate balance. So you have to be very careful. You don't want to make it too thin right away, otherwise it's too fragile. And having the weight on two feet is just not possible for a clay sculpture. So the way you go about it is that you have to figure out a way to have some sort of support. This is why in antiquity you have these Greek statues with dogs standing on the base touching the leg or drapery because that creates more thickness to the sculpture. Even marble sculptures are not strong enough really to hold up just using two points on the ground. So you need a little bit more support. But the point of this is that you sculpt the figure, but you sculpt it with something underneath there. Like I said in the previous video, Rodin used a very popular method at the time in the 19th century, and that is creating a pyramid and then building your sculpture on it and then gradually removing that pyramid mass. But for this, it works out pretty well because I have quite a bit of uh, clay here. And I do have this very rudimentary pipe going into the back. It's actually a little bit more on the hip, the upper back. And that's going to help me support it. This is not the best way. There are other ways. If you use armatures, there's a very popular sculptor online named Philippe Ferrout. And he actually has like the entire armature in the clay and then he cuts it up and removes it. I prefer not to do that because that's so much more work. He makes it look easy because he's very good. He's a very excellent sculptor. And I highly recommend you guys check out his channel, Philippe Farouk. I'll leave it in the description below. He's really excellent, does very good work. And I believe he uses water-based clay as well. So we are going to be working on this and now we're going to be working on the gesture. So we just built up the structure in the last video. Today we are developing the gesture. That's it. The pose is going to be set. I'm just going to start adding some of the details, the spine, and it is kind of a struggle because the sculpture is sinking as I am moving. So you can see me moving up the arms and simply just moving everything up. You should do that often with water-based clay, especially when you have an armature that's like this. Now my arms are a little bit on the thicker side and sometimes it's good to be a little bit thicker because if you keep the arms thin, it means that it's gonna dry out because of the negative shape in between the arm and the chest. I'm still gonna keep the triangle in, in the legs because I need that as support, otherwise it's just gonna collapse. And often I wanna look for a theme. So as I am sculpting, I'm thinking perhaps that I'll sculpt some drapery. Drapery is great for, for doing structure in water-based clay. Now I just wanna add some detail to the head. You know, I also don't want to get ahead of myself and do too many details, but I do sometimes have to suggest the head and the focal points. So the head for me is the strongest focal point. So I'm going to just suggest where the ears are, where the hair, where the nose, where the eyes are. That, if you don't have a sort of central focus point to your sculpture, it's hard to bring it all together. And one of the things I like is the, it's almost like a conceptual look of having more detail in certain parts of the sculpture and then trailering, trailering it off into less detail as you move away from that central focus. So there's the clavicle, the sternum, just adding a few, few more details to the head. This clay has got grog, and I really recommend the clay with grog. There's people that usually ask me what type of clay, and I usually use low fire clay. It's just ceramic clay, but the clay has grog, which is these little silica particles that help firing and shrinkage when the sculpture dries out.
This particular model has a ponytail and it's kind of a massive ponytail. The good thing about ponytails is that it gives you a structure and way of attaching the neck to the back of the back because, and it keeps the head from falling. So because of the clay up in the head is supported by just a very thin neck, it's good to have some sort of support. So in a way, ponytails work great for sculpture, you know, but if it's like a man bun, uh, it just doesn't work as well. So the standard ponytail works great for, for sculpture. Just adding a little bit more detail to the back, that's the trapezius, the diamond shape in the back. You have to find where the spine of the scapula is. It's uh, very important to realize what is happening with the scapula. He's rotating his right arm, for example, and left arm. So that scapula, the medial portion of the scapula, is going to be rotating in the back. I also like to keep things nice and flat, especially the arms. So I'm gonna add some more flatness. And at this point, the arm comes out more. So I made his waist a little bit too thin. So I'm going to pull out the arm by adding clay to it. Usually at the in evenings I get a different light and this kind of creates a cast light coming from the back. And that is good to look at your sculpture in various lights because you want to see what lights will do to it. Normally sculptors will sculpt in full light most of the time and then they'll cast a strong single light and that point is coloring. So at this point you can see a more dramatic style of sculpture. That's by design because if you want to see how deep that pectoralis major is, for example, you can see how deep those shadows are and you can create light effects. Remember, most sculptures are going to be placed in a shelf or on top of a table and they need to be lit fairly well so you can take full advantage of the anatomy. If it's put in a place that just has light everywhere, the effect is not as nice. So often you will find sculptures in museums lit very distinctively. I also like to use this cloth to blend muscle groups together. And this is something I do pretty often. I'll add detail, then I'll use this cloth and I seemingly remove all the detail but in reality, I'm blending muscle groups together, blending things that shouldn't be as prominent. And it's a really good cloth and it's just a shop towel. It's a shop towel that you would get like a advanced auto parts. The prices lately have gotten much higher for these things, these very simple, simple tools. And that's a very stiff paint scraper. I do like sculpting with these paint scrapers because it gives you a different texture rather than relying on the wood tools with the curved edges. Um, I tend to use both, but I have been kind of toying around with just doing a sculpture with just this as a, to see how detailed I could possibly get. But I do love that very flatness to the sculpture. We're coming to the end of the sculpture and I am adding that leg. I, you know, even with the reference, I don't like particularly the way he has his leg set. I kind of wish it was more of a standard contrapposto, so I'm making it more of a standard contrapposto. In the reference that I have, he has like his leg lifted a little bit, and I don't think that looks as good as just a very simple pose. Often, simple poses look the best. Like sometimes you get models that have very contrived poses, and it seems like that they're being used more for 3D artists that use 
very dynamic, overly dynamic poses. But oftentimes, a simple pose like this, I think it's more elegant. It's also a little bit more difficult to do than the extreme dynamic stuff if you're thinking about creating some sort of movement. But if you're doing like movement sort of sculpture, I recommend you put an armature inside. It's much easier because with these type of water-based clays without a really big armature inside, you're limited to what you can do. You can't really do super dynamic stuff. Um, not without a lot of work. So here we go, I'm just removing a little bit more of the base because I want to expose that leg, but you could have something else there as a prop. So if you have any ideas, post in the comments below. Um, I would uh, be curious to see what you guys think I should use as a prop to hold up the sculpture. In 400 subscribers now, and that's all thanks to you. I really appreciate it. And I will be doing more videos of the sculpture as I work on it. So thank you so much and I'll see you in the next video.